Diving into the world of atomic layer deposition, ALD, can be as thrilling as it is enlightening. Today, we will journey together through this fascinating universe, delving into the fundamental principles of thin film technology and its wide-ranging applications. My name is Semi Sherpa, and I will be your guide through this complex maze of semiconductor processes. ALD technology is a cornerstone in semiconductor manufacturing, and understanding its intricacies can open the door to a wealth of knowledge and innovation. Whether you're a veteran engineer, a curious student, or a professional venturing into the semiconductor landscape, this exploration is tailored specifically for you. Our journey will span a variety of key areas, including thermal ALD, plasma-assisted ALD, and area-selective ALD. We will dive into the details of ALD equipment and explore the expansive realm of ALD precursors. Together, we will demystify the complexities of this technology and illuminate the path to mastery. So, strap in for a journey that promises to be as enlightening as it is exhilarating. Are you ready to delve into the world of ALD? Let's embark on this adventure together. In the world of semiconductor manufacturing, the choice of deposition method plays a critical role in determining the quality, efficiency, and cost-effectiveness of the resulting thin films. Three commonly used deposition techniques are chemical vapor deposition, CVD, physical vapor deposition, PVD, and atomic layer deposition, ALD. Each has its strengths and weaknesses, and the choice between them often comes down to a careful balancing act between cost, quality, and the specific requirements of the application. CVD and PVD have traditionally dominated the deposition market, largely due to their cost-effectiveness. ALD, while offering superior uniformity and step coverage, has been less widely adopted due to its higher costs. However, the demand for ALD has been growing as the industry's requirements for thin film uniformity and step coverage have become increasingly stringent. The market's shift towards more complex devices and architectures has highlighted the unique advantages of ALD, despite its higher costs. The defining characteristic of ALD is its surface exchange reaction, which offers unparalleled step coverage and thickness control. This is especially advantageous in the creation of superlattice structures and for applications that require low process temperatures. Additionally, ALD is known for its long mean time between cleaning, MTBC, largely attributed to the absence of powder formation in the pumping line, a common issue in CVD processes. This feature translates to less maintenance downtime and increased operational efficiency. Yet, the implementation of ALD does come with its challenges. The process demands a higher consumption of precursor materials, leading to a higher cost of consumables, COC. This is because ALD requires excess precursor to ensure complete surface coverage, and the unadsorbed precursor must then be purged, leading to waste. Furthermore, the precursors used in ALD processes can often be dangerous and toxic, necessitating stringent safety measures. Moreover, ALD processes are more complex to control than their CVD and PVD counterparts. Achieving consistent, high-quality results with ALD requires a deep understanding of the process parameters and a high degree of control over the process conditions. Despite these challenges, the superior quality and precision offered by ALD make it an increasingly attractive choice in today's high-tech semiconductor landscape. In conclusion, ALD's unique advantages in step coverage, thickness control, and uniformity make it an increasingly important player in the semiconductor deposition market. As the industry continues to evolve and demands for quality and precision grow, we can expect ALD to play a more prominent role in the future of semiconductor manufacturing. Atomic Layer Deposition, ALD, is a powerful technique for the deposition of thin films with excellent control over thickness, uniformity, and composition. It falls under the category of chemical vapor deposition, CVD, methods, but differs significantly in its operation. In contrast to typical CVD processes, ALD uses sequential and separate introduction of precursors to the deposition chamber. Taking the deposition of AL203 as an example, trimethyl aluminum, TMA, and water, H2O, are typically used as precursors. The ALD cycle for AL203 deposition consists of four main steps. The process begins with the introduction of the TMA precursor into the reaction chamber. This precursor will react with the surface of the substrate, forming a layer of AL atoms and releasing methane gas. 
This is a self-limiting process, meaning that once all the available surface sites are occupied by the precursor, no further reaction occurs, ensuring an even, atomic layer of coverage. After the TMA reaction, the chamber is purged with an inert gas, often nitrogen or argon, to remove any unreacted TMA and reaction byproducts, preventing unwanted gas phase reactions. The second half of the ALD cycle begins with the introduction of water vapor. The water molecules react with the AL containing surface, forming a layer of Al2O3 and releasing methane gas. Similar to the TMA process, this reaction is also self-limiting. Once all the AL sites have reacted with water, the reaction stops. The chamber is then purged again with an inert gas to remove unreacted water and reaction byproducts. This completes one ALD cycle and results in the deposition of one atomic layer of Al2O3. The film thickness in ALD is controlled precisely by the number of cycles. Each cycle deposits a set amount of material, allowing the thickness of the film to be determined simply by the number of cycles executed. Due to the self-limiting nature of the reactions, excellent uniformity and conformity can be achieved, even on complex 3D structures. Furthermore, as the reactions are surface controlled, there are no gas phase reactions, reducing the risk of particle contamination and enhancing the quality of the deposited film. The ALD process has its roots in the 1960s when Stanislav Koltsov, Valentin Alaskovsky, and their colleagues at the Leningrad Technological Institute developed the principles of ALD. They initially referred to this technique as molecular layering. Their research ranged from fundamental chemistry to applied research, including microelectronics. In 1974, Tuomo Suntala began using ALD as a technique for developing thin film electroluminescent displays at Instrumentarium OI in Finland. He coined the term atomic layer epitaxy, a LE, for the technology, based on the Greek word epitaxy, meaning arrangement upon. Suntala and his team made significant strides when they transitioned from using high vacuum reactors to inert gas reactors. This enabled the use of compound reactants, like methyl chlorides, hydrogen sulfide, and water vapor, in the ALE process. The term atomic layer deposition was first proposed as an alternative to ALE by Marku Leskela at the ALE 1 conference in Espoo, Finland. It took about a decade for the term to become widespread, aligning with the broader recognition and industrial application of the technology. The technology was first disclosed at the 1980 SID conference, and the first large-scale proof-of-concept displays using ALE were installed at the Helsinki Vanta Airport in 1983. The ALD technology was sold to the Dutch ASM International in 1999, and Microchemistry Limited became ASM Microchemistry OI. In the early 2000s, the expertise in ALD reactors in Finland led to the formation of two new manufacturers, Benek OI and Picosan OI, the latter of which was started by Sven Linfers, a close associate of Suntalas since 1975. The ongoing trend towards device shrinkage in semiconductor manufacturing has brought about a shift towards the use of atomic layer deposition, ALD. This is largely due to the ability of ALD to produce high-quality, low-impurity films that are desirable for high-K dielectrics and shallow trench isolation, SDI, oxides. The highly controlled deposition process of ALD, which alternates between different gaseous species, ensures uniform and precise layers that are critical for advanced semiconductor devices. However, the process requires specialized equipment and can be complex to control, resulting in relatively high costs. As device architectures have evolved towards 3D structures with high aspect ratios, the importance of achieving high step coverage has grown. Here again, ALD has proven advantageous, with its superior step coverage capabilities being employed for the deposition of metal insulator metal, MIM capacitors and electrodes and low K-gate spaces. Moreover, the trend towards lower thermal budgets in semiconductor manufacturing necessitates the use of low-temperature technologies. ALD, given its process nature, is able to deposit films at relatively lower temperatures, making it suitable for double patterning technology, DPT, oxides. The adaptability of ALD for various materials also adds to its appeal, expanding its range of applications. ALD has been used to deposit a diverse set of materials, from dielectrics to metals, contributing to its proliferation in various sectors of technology. The evolution of semiconductor devices and manufacturing technologies has thus led to a significant trend of migration towards ALD, driven by device shrinkage, the incorporation of new materials and unit processes, and the rise of 3D device architectures. 
This is reflected in the growth of the ALD market, which is expected to experience significant expansion in the coming years due to its increasing incorporation in semiconductor manufacturing processes. Atomic layer deposition, ALD, is a thin film deposition technique that has unique advantages but also certain challenges. One of the primary advantages of ALD is the atomic scale control it offers over film thickness. This is achieved through self-limiting reactions, which ensure a uniform deposition rate regardless of the precursor concentration. This allows for layer-by-layer -layer deposition, resulting in films with excellent thickness uniformity. This uniformity is particularly beneficial when dealing with complex three-dimensional geometries where excellent step coverage is required. Representative example is deposition of zirconia alumina zirconia dielectrics, so-called ZAS, in DRAM capacitor. Moreover, ALD can create high-quality dense films with very low levels of impurities, as no gas phase reactions occur in the deposition process, reducing contamination. This feature results in films of high purity, which is critical for many applications. The adaptability of ALD is another advantage. It can be used with a wide range of materials, including metals, metal oxides, and semiconductors, enhancing its versatility. Furthermore, ALD operates at relatively low temperatures, making it a preferred choice when dealing with temperature-sensitive substrates. However, ALD has a few drawbacks. One of the primary challenges is the slow film growth rate. The deposition rate in ALD is slow as each cycle deposits only a fraction of a nanometer of material. This results in a time-consuming process, especially for applications that require thicker films. However, different configurations such as batch and semi-batch systems or plasma-enhanced ALD -E can be used to handle multiple wafers simultaneously and enable thicker films, thereby speeding up the process. Yet, these systems might trade off uniformity to some extent. The requirement for precise control is another challenge. ALD involves a series of complex steps, and each step can significantly influence the outcome of the process, making it difficult to consistently achieve good results. Particularly, ALD valve operation requires millisecond control and has a limited lifetime, adding to the process complexity. In addition, precursor selection in ALD can be limiting. The requirement for self-limiting reactions restricts the choice of precursors, which can limit the types of materials that can be deposited. Lastly, the cost factor associated with ALD might be a limitation. The process involves numerous complex steps, each requiring specialized equipment, making the overall process relatively expensive. Furthermore, the precursors used in ALD can also be costly, Adding to the total cost of the process. These cost factors might restrict the application of ALD in large scale or cost sensitive industries. Atomic layer deposition ALD, is a sophisticated and powerful technique for creating thin films with high precision, and adsorption is a key step in this process. Adsorption in the context of ALD involves the interaction of gaseous precursor molecules with the surface of the substrate. This interaction can be categorized into two types, physisorption and chemisorption. Physisorption involves weak, reversible interactions between the gas molecules and the substrate. These interactions are primarily driven by van der Waals forces and result in a physically adsorbed layer of precursor molecules on the substrate surface. The nature of physisorption allows for the desorption of molecules under suitable conditions, such as changes in temperature or pressure. On the other hand, Chemisorption forms a strong chemical bond between the precursor molecules and the substrate, generally considered irreversible under ALD conditions. Unlike physisorption, chemisorption involves the creation of new chemical bonds, which can be covalent or ionic in nature. This strong bond makes chemisorption a highly specific process that yields a single layer of adsorbed precursor molecules on the substrate surface. Temperature plays a crucial role in determining the type of adsorption in ALD. The minimum temperature requirement ensures there's enough energy for chemisorption to occur. Too high a temperature, however, may lead to thermal decomposition of the precursor or the chemisorbed layer. In sum, adsorption, particularly chemisorption, is an indispensable step in the ALD process. It sets the stage for the subsequent reaction with another precursor, leading to the formation of the desired thin film. The growth rate per cycle, GPC, in atomic layer deposition, ALD, is a critical parameter that measures the film thickness formed in each ALD cycle. It provides an important insight into the efficiency of the ALD process and the quality of the resulting thin films. 
The GPC is calculated as the slope of the graph representing the film thickness as a function of the number of ALD cycles. Specifically, it is the film thickness divided by the number of cycles. In an ideal ALD process, the GPC is constant and does not exceed the thickness of a single atomic or molecular layer. This is because each ALD cycle involves the sequential introduction of two or more reactants, and each reactant layer is self-limiting, meaning that the reaction stops once all available surface sites have been consumed. This self-limiting nature of the ALD process is what makes it possible to achieve atomic scale control of film thickness and uniformity. However, in practice, the GPC is often less than the theoretical maximum of one atomic or molecular layer per cycle. This could be due to several reasons, including incomplete surface reactions, steric hindrance between reactant molecules, or limitations in precursor supply or reactant exposure. Moreover, precursor dosing and purge durations, which make up the two half cycles of an ALD cycle, can also impact the GPC. Adequate precursor dosing is essential to ensure full surface saturation, while efficient purging is needed to remove unreacted precursor molecules and reaction byproducts, preventing their incorporation into the growing film. The GPC can be influenced by a variety of factors, including the ALD process conditions such as temperature and pressure, the properties of the precursors and co-reactants used, and the nature of the substrate material. Adjusting these parameters can allow for precise control of the GPC, enabling the tuning of film thickness and properties for specific applications. Atomic Layer Deposition ALD, is a process used to create thin films of materials on a substrate with extreme precision. It works by exposing the substrate surface to alternate gaseous species, typically referred to as precursors or reactants, in a series of sequential, non-overlapping pulses. This method results in films of high purity and excellent uniformity, as the precursors react with the surface in a self-limiting way. The reaction terminates once all the available sites on the surface are consumed, which allows for precise control over the thickness of the film and the ability to create uniform films on complex substrates. The key concept when optimizing an ALD process is the growth per cycle, GPC, which is used to determine the completion of the surface chemical reaction. The GPC is influenced by multiple factors, such as the dosage of the precursor, the purge time, and the oxidation steps. For instance, in the first step of the ALD process, the precursor dosage, controlled by an ALD pulse valve, determines the amount of the precursor introduced into the reactor. If the dose pulse time is lower than a certain threshold, for example, 0.2 seconds, the coverage of the precursor on the surface might be insufficient, leading to a decrease in GPC. However, when the dose pulse time is above this threshold, a saturated growth is reached, and further increase in the precursor dosage does not result in a higher growth rate. This phenomenon is vital for the ALD process as it helps to minimize the consumption of the precursor dot. The subsequent steps in the ALD process, such as purging the chamber and oxidation steps, also play significant roles in determining the GPC. For example, if the purging time is less than a certain threshold, for example, 6 seconds, the redundant precursor might remain in the chamber when the oxidant is introduced, leading to chemical vapor deposition, CVD-like growth. This is undesirable for the ALD process as it disrupts the monolayer growth, affecting the film quality. The optimization of these variables is crucial to ensure the self-limiting nature of ALD, especially when the precursors are chemisorbed on the surface. However, in cases where precursors are only physisorbed, they can be easily desorbed during the purge step, which may result in a decrease in GPC. In contrast, when precursor decomposition occurs, there can be an increase in GPC. In some scenarios, the absence of self-limiting behavior can lead to a continuous increase in GPC with increased feeding time, indicating a transition into the CVD regime. In the atomic layer deposition, ALD, process, growth per cycle, GPC, is a critical parameter that is significantly influenced by factors such as purge time and substrate temperature. The purge time in ALD is the period during which the reactor chamber is cleared of any remaining precursor molecules and reaction byproducts before the next precursor is introduced. If the purge time is too short, remnants of the precursor may linger in the chamber and participate in unintended chemical reactions, leading to a phenomenon known as pseudochemical vapor deposition, CVD, or gas phase CVD reaction. These unwanted reactions can result in non-uniform film growth, disrupting the layer-by-layer -layer deposition process that is the hallmark of ALD. Meanwhile, substrate temperature plays a crucial role in determining the growth rate of the deposited film. In an ideal ALD process, the growth rate remains constant with respect to the substrate temperature. This consistency is essential as it allows for accurate control over film thickness across a range of process conditions. One of the unique features of ALD is the existence of an ALD window. 
this is a specific temperature range where the precursor can adsorb and react on the substrate surface, but does not decompose or desorb, facilitating the sequential and self-limiting nature of ALD. If a precursor does not have an ALD window, it is deemed unsuitable for the ALD process. This is because its behavior outside the window would deviate from the ideal self-limiting reactions, resulting in unpredictable and inconsistent film growth. In this context, understanding and optimizing purge times, substrate temperature, and recognizing the ALD window are crucial in performing successful ALD processes, ensuring uniform and precise deposition of thin films. In a typical ALD cycle, a gaseous precursor is introduced to the substrate surface, where it undergoes a self-limiting surface reaction to form a monoatomic layer of the precursor material. This self-limiting attribute ensures the film growth is controlled, allowing only a finite amount of material to be deposited per cycle. The exact amount is determined by the available reactive sites on the substrate surface. Following the deposition of the first precursor, the chamber is purged to remove any unreacted precursor and reaction byproducts, before introducing the second precursor. Under ideal circumstances, the GPC should remain constant irrespective of the number of ALD cycles, as the self-limiting nature of the process should ensure consistent deposition of material. However, there are three distinct scenarios where the GPC deviates from this ideal behavior, surface-enhanced growth, surface-inhibited growth, and island-to-continuous growth. In the case of surface-enhanced growth, the GPC is initially high during the early stages of the ALD process but decreases with successive cycles until it stabilizes. This phenomenon can occur due to the initial high availability of reactive sites, which decreases as the film grows and the surface chemistry changes. Surface inhibited growth, on the other hand, is characterized by a low initial GPC that gradually increases with each cycle until it reaches a steady state. This scenario can arise when the initial surface is not entirely conducive to the precursor surface reaction, perhaps due to surface contamination, but as the ALD film starts to form, the surface becomes progressively more reactive, leading to an increase in the GPC. Lastly, the island to continuous growth mode sees a transition from an initially low GPC, similar to surface inhibited growth, which then increases much like in surface enhanced growth, before finally decreasing and stabilizing. This is often observed when the initial film growth occurs in a scattered, island-like manner, with the GPC increasing as the islands coalesce into a continuous film. As the film becomes continuous, the surface reactivity decreases, leading to a subsequent decrease in the GPC until it stabilizes. Each of these deviations from the ideal constant GPC reflects the complex interplay of surface reactions that occur during the ALD process, revealing the intricacies of this powerful thin film deposition technique. The atomic layer deposition, ALD, process plays a critical role in the fabrication of dynamic random access memory, DRAM, capacitors due to its ability to ensure excellent step coverage. ALD operates by alternately introducing gaseous species, known as precursors, to a substrate in a series of non-overlapping pulses. This results in a self-limiting reaction that only ends once all available sites on the substrate surface are consumed, enabling the precise and uniform deposition of materials. A heavier precursor dose is necessary in the ALD process within DRAM capacitors to ensure effective step coverage. The primary reason for this requirement is to overcome the limitations imposed by the geometric structure of the DRAM capacitors. The high aspect ratio of these structures, i.e., the ratio of their height to their width, makes it challenging for the precursors to reach the bottom of the structure effectively, especially in the latest DRAM capacitor processes that involve the equivalent of 170 planar layers of precursors. The heavy precursor dose ensures that a sufficient amount of material can reach the bottom of the high aspect ratio structures, thereby ensuring a uniform layer of deposition across the entire structure. This factor is vital because any non-uniformity in the deposited layer could lead to inefficiencies in the overall operation of the DRAM. During the ALD process, the introduction of a high dose of precursors is followed by the reduction of precursors, which could potentially give rise to byproducts. These byproducts could obstruct the diffusion of precursors, thereby reducing the effective flux at the bottom of the DRAM capacitor. This phenomenon underscores the need for a heavy precursor dose to counteract the reduced effective flux and maintain uniform deposition. However, the use of a heavy precursor dose in ALD is not without challenges. One of the drawbacks of ALD is that it can be difficult to control due to the complexity of the process. This complexity is further amplified when a heavy precursor dose is employed, making it challenging to achieve consistently good results. Atomic layer deposition, ALD, is a method used to deposit thin films onto a substrate with atomic level precision. 
Plasma enhanced ALD, PEALD, also known as plasma assisted ALD, is a variant of this technique that uses plasma to enhance the reaction between precursor molecules and the substrate surface, allowing for lower deposition temperatures and improved film properties. In a PEALD process, the first step involves the introduction of a precursor, typically a metal containing compound, in a gaseous form to the substrate surface. This precursor reacts with the surface to form a single atomic or molecular layer. The system is then purged to remove any unreacted precursor molecules and byproducts, ensuring that the layers do not mix and preserving the self-limiting nature of the process. Next, plasma is introduced. This plasma is an ionized gas that typically contains reactive species, such as oxygen or nitrogen ions, depending on the type of film being deposited. These species react with the surface, much like the first precursor, and this reaction is also self-limiting. Once the plasma has had the chance to react with the surface, the system is purged again to remove any unreacted species and byproducts. This sequence of steps constitutes one PEALD cycle. By repeating these cycles, a film of the desired thickness can be uniformly deposited onto the substrate. The uniformity and precision of this process, combined with the ability to use a variety of precursors, makes ALD, and specifically PEALD, a versatile tool for thin film deposition. The advantages of PEALD include lower deposition temperatures, making it suitable for temperature-sensitive substrates, and improved film properties as the plasma can break down complex precursors or remove impurities from the film during deposition. This results in films of high purity, excellent conformality, and low impurity levels. However, PEALD systems are more complex and expensive than thermal ALD systems due to the need for plasma generation and handling. Moreover, the plasma can potentially damage the substrate or the deposited film, especially for sensitive materials or structures. Therefore, careful process optimization is necessary when using PEALD. The PEALD process begins in the ALD reactor or chamber. This is a specially designed environment where the deposition takes place. Within the reactor, a substrate holder is used to secure the substrate or wafer. The holder and the substrate are typically grounded to ensure electrical stability during the process. The reactor chamber has an inner viewport, which allows operators to monitor the deposition process visually. To maintain an environment suitable for deposition, a vacuum pump is employed to remove air and other potential contaminants from the reactor chamber. The exhausted gases are then safely directed away from the reactor through an exhaust system. The actual deposition process in PEALD involves several key components. Firstly, a precursor from a precursor canister is introduced into the ALD reactor chamber via an ALD injector. The precursor is often vaporized before it enters the chamber to ensure it is in the correct state for deposition. A mass flow controller, MFC, is used to regulate the amount of precursor introduced into the chamber. The delivery of the precursor is facilitated by a carrier gas, usually nitrogen, N2, which helps to spread the precursor evenly across the substrate. This mixture passes through a showerhead, ensuring an even distribution of the precursor over the substrate. Once the precursor is inside the chamber, it undergoes adsorption onto the substrate surface. Following the adsorption of the precursor, a purging process occurs. This involves flushing the chamber with an inert gas such as nitrogen to remove any unreacted precursor and byproducts. This purge ensures that only the desired atoms remain on the substrate, contributing to the thin film's purity. After the purging stage, the substrate is exposed to plasma. The plasma is generated outside the ALD reactor chamber and then introduced into the chamber. This plasma exposure step is what differentiates PEALD from traditional ALD. The highly reactive plasma species react with the adsorbed precursor layer, facilitating a reaction that would otherwise require higher temperatures. The result is the formation of a thin film on the substrate. The plasma, precursor, and carrier gas are introduced and exhausted in a cyclic manner, controlled by an ALD valve. The process of adsorption, purging, and plasma exposure is repeated many times, layer by layer, until the desired film thickness is achieved. Atomic layer deposition, ALD, is a film growth process that involves the exposure of a substrate surface to alternate gaseous species, also known as precursors or reactants. 
these precursors are never present simultaneously in the reactor, but are inserted in a series of sequential, non-overlapping pulses. Each pulse reacts with the surface in a self-limiting manner, which means the reaction stops once all the available sites on the surface are consumed. This ability to regulate the growth of the film to a single atomic layer per cycle is one of the key advantages of ALD, leading to films with high purity and excellent uniformity. However, the complexity and precision of the ALD process can lead to high manufacturing costs and difficulties in achieving consistent results. In the context of Plasma Enhanced Atomic Layer Deposition, PEALD, this process employs plasma to increase the reactivity of radicals, thereby allowing for a larger ALD process window and lower temperature deposition. The plasma is only activated during the reactant exposure step to preserve the self-limiting nature of the ALD reactions. One of the advantages of PEALD includes the potential for higher throughput, although this is not always the case. The lower deposition temperature can be beneficial for certain applications, and in situ plasma treatments can be conducted either before or after the deposition process. The films produced by PEALD tend to be denser, which makes them effective as diffusion barriers. Additionally, PEALD can result in lower levels of impurities, which is particularly advantageous for high-K dielectrics. On the downside, PEALD involves a more complicated chamber design and reaction chemistry. This can sometimes lead to slower deposition rates, poorer conformality, and potential damage to the films, although these drawbacks are not always observed. Furthermore, while PEALD can create denser films, this may not always be desirable, as it can affect the properties of the film in ways that may not be beneficial for certain applications. Atomic Layer Deposition, ALD Equipment can come in a variety of configurations, each designed to cater to specific needs and applications. These configurations include the traveling wave, shower head, and rotating injector systems. The traveling wave system is known for its high material utilization efficiency, making it an economical choice for many applications. Its design allows it to be easily scaled to accommodate large substrates. However, its relatively large reaction volume, around 100 cc, and hot wall reaction block can lead to a higher probability of particle generation, which may affect the purity and quality of the deposited films. On the other hand, the shower head configuration offers a low probability for particle generation due to its cold wall system. It provides a uniform source flow, ensuring consistent deposition across the substrate. However, due to its large reaction volume, it requires longer purge times compared to other systems. The purge process is necessary to remove unreacted precursors and reaction byproducts before the next cycle, and longer purge times could impact the overall process time and efficiency. Lastly, the rotating injector system boasts a simple structure which may be easier to maintain and operate. Like the showerhead system, it also has a large reaction volume which leads to longer purge times. One of the challenges with this system is the difficulty in controlling the uniform source flux. The source flux is the rate at which precursor molecules arrive at the substrate surface, and uneven flux can lead to non-uniform film deposition. Each of these systems offers unique advantages and trade-offs. The choice of system will depend on factors such as the specific application requirements, budget constraints, and the desired balance between throughput, uniformity, and process control. It's also worth noting that advancements in ALD technology and equipment design continue to emerge, with researchers and manufacturers seeking to optimize these systems and develop new configurations to better meet the evolving needs of various industries. This makes the field of ALD both a fascinating area of study and a critical component in many high-tech manufacturing processes. And atomic layer deposition, ALD, precursor delivery systems play a critical role in defining the success of the deposition process. The type of precursor delivery system used often depends on the characteristics of the precursor, such as its vapor pressure and thermal stability. The bubbler system is commonly employed for precursors with high vapor pressure. The simplicity of the delivery line and the ease of temperature control are key advantages of this system. However, its effectiveness is limited by the vapor out amount difference with source level, and it can potentially induce thermal degradation of the precursor. A bubbler system also tends to have a low usage efficiency, with a relatively short exchange interval and challenges in level sensing accuracy. For precursors with low vapor pressure or those that are solid and solvent, the liquid delivery system, LDS, is often the preferred choice. This system allows for high source dosage and numerical flow control, and it can accommodate cocktail sources. However, it may face issues such as clogging, and it requires careful temperature control.
Additionally, the choice of solvent, particularly its solubility and boiling point, can affect the delivery performance. Lastly, direct injection is another method used in precursor delivery, especially useful when short heating zones are necessary. This system is less prone to clogging issues and doesn't require final valve operation. It can also handle cocktail sources. On the downside, it can be difficult to maintain, and the long purge times due to residual source can be a problem. Furthermore, there can be interference from heater temperatures. Overall, the choice of precursor delivery system in ALD is a critical decision that needs to be made based on the specific requirements of the deposition process and the nature of the precursors used. In an atomic layer deposition, ALD, process, a typical recipe might involve the use of precursors such as trimethyl aluminum, TMA, and water. This cycle involves a series of sequential steps that are designed to ensure optimal deposition of the desired material onto the substrate. During the TMA feeding phase of the ALD cycle, the precursor is introduced into the canister through a process known as bubbling. This is a method of vaporizing the TMA, where a carrier gas, often an inert gas like nitrogen, is bubbled through the liquid TMA. The carrier gas then carries the vaporized TMA into the deposition chamber where it reacts with the surface of the substrate. Once the TMA has been sufficiently introduced, the system then undergoes a purge phase. This is designed to remove any unreacted TMA and byproducts from the system before the introduction of the next precursor. During the purge, the system bypasses the canister and purges the supply line to remove residual precursors and byproducts. This step is critical to maintaining the atomic precision that characterizes ALD. Next, water is introduced as the second precursor in a similar fashion. The water is bubbled in its own canister and then introduced into the deposition chamber where it reacts with the TMA-covered substrate. This reaction typically forms an aluminum oxide film on the substrate, while releasing methane as a byproduct. Following the water introduction, another purge phase occurs to clear the system of any leftover water and reaction byproducts. This entire process, from the TMA introduction to the final purge, constitutes one ALD cycle and this cycle is repeated as many times as necessary to achieve the desired film thickness on the substrate. To ensure the safe and effective operation of the ALD process, various safety sensors are deployed. These include gas and liquid leak sensors to detect potential leaks in the canister, as well as flame and smoke sensors to monitor for any signs of combustion, particularly important given the pyrophoric nature of TMA which can ignite spontaneously upon exposure to air. Moreover, the canister housing the precursors is often equipped with a heating jacket. This serves the purpose of counteracting the cooling effect that occurs when the source material vaporizes during the bubbling phase. By maintaining a consistent temperature in the canister, the vapor pressure of the precursor is kept stable, ensuring a reliable and consistent delivery of the precursor into the deposition chamber. In summary, the ALD process is a highly controlled method of thin film deposition using a series of carefully managed steps and sophisticated safety measures to ensure the atomic precision and high-quality outcomes associated with this technique. In atomic layer deposition, ALD, the selection of precursors is of paramount importance. The precursor, chemically, is a substance that contains some or all of the elements needed to form the final product. In the context of ALD, a precursor usually consists of a central atom which forms the basis of the film, whether it's for a metal, oxide, or nitride layer, and ligands, which are inorganic or organic groups that coordinate with the metal. The central atom, or the metallic core, is integral to the final film and should remain intact throughout the ALD process. In contrast, the ligand crust, should be removed during the process. The ligands are attached to the central atom and are removed during the reaction steps, leaving behind the central atom on the substrate surface. The delivery of precursors to the ALD process chamber is a critical step. The bond between the central metal atom and the ligand should be strong enough to withstand the delivery process but not too strong that it hinders the surface reaction. The surface adsorption of precursors is influenced by molecular dipole moments or partial charges. High reactivity is essential for the surface reaction step, where the ligands react and are removed, leaving the central atom on the surface. The choice of precursors for ALD is influenced by a variety of factors, including their reactivity, volatility, and thermal stability, as well as the desired properties of the resulting film. The precursors need to have sufficient volatility to be transported in the gas phase to the substrate, yet they must be thermally stable enough to prevent decomposition before reaching the substrate. The reaction between the precursor and the substrate should be energetically favorable and should produce a film with the desired properties. 
Overall, the precursors play a critical role in the ALD process, and their proper selection and handling are vital to the success of the deposition process and the quality of the resulting films. Atomic Layer Deposition, ALD, is a highly controlled process, and a crucial part of this control comes from the selection of precursors. Precursors are the chemical compounds that are alternately introduced into the reaction chamber during ALD, and they have a significant impact on the properties of the film being deposited. There are several key criteria that need to be considered when selecting an ALD precursor. First and foremost, the precursor should have a low activation energy for chemical reaction. This ensures that the precursor can readily react with the substrate or the previously deposited layer during each pulse of the ALD process. At the same time, the precursor should have a high thermal stability against undesirable reactions. This means it should not decompose on its own in the reaction chamber or during storage. Unwanted decomposition can lead to impurities in the deposited film and can also pose safety risks. The size of the reactant molecule plays an important role as well. Smaller molecules are typically preferred because they present a low hindrance effect, which means they are less likely to block or interfere with the reactions happening on the surface. This property is often represented by a low sticking coefficient. To ensure efficient transport of the precursor into the ALD chamber, a high vapor pressure is desirable. An equilibrium vapor pressure in the range of 0.1 to 1 torr is often considered ideal. This ensures that the precursor can be easily delivered to the substrate in gaseous form, which is necessary for the ALD process. One of the critical aspects to consider is that the precursor should not etch the film or the substrate. Any etching would compromise the uniformity and the quality of the deposited film. Furthermore, the precursor's reaction behavior should be predictable and analyzable using density functional theory, DFT, a computational modeling technique that helps understand the quantum mechanical behavior of the system. This can provide valuable insights into the deposition process and allow for better control and optimization. Finally, the ideal ALD precursor should possess characteristics like long-term stability or shelf life, clean decomposition, affordability, easy synthesis and scalability, and safety, non-explosive and non-toxic. It's important to note that these ideal properties are somewhat different from those required for chemical vapor deposition, CVD, precursors, where high thermal stability and reactivity are the main concerns. In summary, the selection of an appropriate ALD precursor is a complex task that requires careful consideration of a variety of factors. The right choice can greatly enhance the efficiency, quality, and safety of the ALD process, making it a critical aspect of this advanced thin film technology. There are various kinds of precursors used in ALD, which can be characterized by their ligands. 1. Halides, these inorganic precursors have good thermal stability and high reactivity, making them cost-effective. However, they are predominantly solid and can be corrosive. They are used in applications like hexachloridesilane, HCDS, for selective epitaxial growth, SEG, and titanium tetrachloride, TiCl4, for titanium nitride, TIN. 2. Alkoxides, primarily used for oxide chemical vapor deposition, CVD, they have the advantage of easy hydrolysis but suffer from low thermal stability. They are not suitable for high temperature processes. An example is tetraethyl orthosilicate, TEOS, for silicon dioxide, SiO2. 3. Alkalmides, these ALD precursors have a high deposition rate, DR, but decompose at relatively low temperatures. They are used in various applications, including the isopropyl aminosilane, DIPA, bisdiethylaminosilane, BDEAS, and tetramethyldiamidosilane, TDMOS, for SiO2. 4. Alkyls, these were commonly used in the 1980s due to their high reactivity but have low thermal stability. Trimethylaluminium, TMA, is used for aluminium oxide, AL2O3. 5. Cyclopentadienyls, used in the 1990s and 2000s, they also have high reactivity but suffer from low thermal stability. They are used in ACP2 for zirconium oxide, ZRox, and USNO1 for titanium oxide, TIOx. 7. Beta dictinates, these have been used since 2000. They offer high volatility compared to alkoxides but have low vapor pressure, typically being solid or oil. They are used in lead zirconate titanate, PZT, and barium strontium titanate, BST. 
ALD precursor selection is driven by the desired film properties, and the choice of precursor can greatly affect the final product. For example, in the production of silicon-based films, different precursors like TEOS, OMCTS, DEMS, ATRP, HCDS, DCS, 3MS, 4MS, TDMOS, DIPA, and TSA are used. These precursors are used in various applications, from SiO2 CBD to silicon seg, low temperature polysilicon, SIN LPCBD, and spin on glass. In the case of high K precursors for applications like metal gates or DRAM MIM capacitors, precursors like TMA, TAMAS, ACP2, TDMAT, USN01, HTB, HPL02, and PDMAT are employed for the deposition of aluminum oxide, zirconium oxide, titanium oxide, hafnium oxide, and tantalum oxide respectively. Finally, for metal precursor applications, CCBTA, COCO, MPA, LPS3, HPK1, and TDTDET are used for cobalt selective area CVD, aluminum CVD, and tantalium nitride barrier respectively. These precursors have specific applications and are chosen based on the required properties of the final product. Despite its complexities and associated costs, the ALD process remains an essential technique in the production of thin films due to the excellent uniformity and purity of the resulting films. Your enthusiasm for delving into the foundations of ALD, a key pillar of semiconductor technology, is highly commendable. As a community of learners, we are greatly motivated by your interest and dedication. If this content has benefited you, kindly click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and enable notifications to stay abreast of our most recent content. In the next episode, we will unpack the fundamental concepts of the electroplating EP, process. We will scrutinize its process details, roles of chemicals, and equipment, as well as evaluate its advantages and disadvantages within the framework of semiconductor manufacturing's efficiency and quality. Your ongoing support and enthusiasm are the fuel that drives our efforts. Remain engaged with semi-slides as we continuously shed light on the mesmerizing world of semiconductor technology. We look forward to seeing you in our next episode.